Hey guys, today's episode three on what goes on behind a washer dryer repair business. Now, I use QuickBooks for my business and there are endless ways of configuring QuickBooks for your business. And the, I'm just, I'm not going to bore you to death on how QuickBooks works. I'm just going to touch the things that I use to run my business uh, on a daily basis. Okay, a, a quick disclaimer. QuickBooks doesn't pay me to uh, promote their product. Uh, but it's, a, it's the product that I use and I'm familiar with it. And there are, are numerous other programs out there that you might be familiar with or, or you'll like better than this. But this is what I use. And every morning when I get up I, and get ready for work, I stick my cash register in my back pocket. My cash register happens to be my cell phone. So uh, these are the two applications that I use on a daily basis. And they're both QuickBooks apps. And you can download them from the uh, App Store. And they work in conjunction with the uh, QuickBooks uh, subscription that I have and that I use on my laptop every day. And uh, the first one, if you look at, at this screen here, there's a, there are two green icons. One says QuickBooks under it, and the other one says Go Payment. Both of them are QuickBooks icons. Now, the first one, QuickBooks, is, is just a, uh, it's kind of an extension of uh, what you get on your, on your uh, computer when you buy a subscription for that. And it, it will come up with this page right here. Actually, I don't do very much with this app on the phone because most of the things that you can do here can be done on your laptop. One of the things that I do use as far as that is if you look up here in the quick actions, it says snap receipt. I will uh, use that to uh, snap pictures of my receipts that when I make a purchase at maybe uh, fuel up the service truck or perhaps uh, I go to AutoZone, uh, may, maybe buy some shop towels or lubricants or whatever, and I'll snap uh, pictures of the receipts. And a, a lot of businesses used to collect paper receipts and they, they keep them in files or boxes or whatever. If they ever got audited, they'd al always have a, a copy of that. And this is a way that QuickBooks keeps a copy of your receipts. And if you ever get audited, you'll always have a, a a uh, picture of the paper copy of the receipt of that sale. So anyway, I don't really use that program. The only time I use it in the in the field is uh, like uh, snap receipts. And also, if you look all the way down to the bottom and the bottom right at the menu, you can push that, and it get, it brings you up to the uh, the shortcuts menu. And when you first get QuickBooks. It behooves you to go down to that the mileage tab there and set up your uh, your cell phone to track your mileage. So if you're you're tracking your mileage every day with your cell phone and and you can use that for a deduction at the end of the year for a mileage deduction. And I just got word today from QuickBooks that because of the high uh, cost of fuel right now, uh, the IRS has increased the amount of money they will allow you to claim per mile. I think it. I think it was sixty-two cents. I don't remember what it was before, but anyway, they've increased that, so you can deduct uh, quite a bit of money at the end of the year if you keep track of your mileage. And when we get to the the computer page of this, I'll, I'll show you how to do this. Another thing, if you go up here to all, up at the top, and, and click on all, and you can scroll down to products and services. There are times when I need to add a product or service to my list of products that I sell to customers. Uh, right here, you can go to this all and you can uh, scroll down to products and services and click on that. And it will show you a list of what you have in products and services. And like in this parts uh, area here, it shows you all the parts that you have, have put in there. But if you want to, you can add a product or service by hitting that, that green uh, plus sign down there, and you can add a, a product or service. Service. One thing I, I have noticed that if you're using this and you you type something up here in the name, let's just say you, you type this um, error, and it, and it is a taxable item. If you click the taxable thing, it will erase what you just typed. So the first thing you want to do, if it's a taxable item, you always uh, uh, scroll, uh, move the, the taxable tab first, and then you can add the item. But we're not going to add any items now. And I usually do this 
in the field if I ordered a part for somebody, uh, like a control board or something. So I would take the, the part, what it cost me, the shipping, then add 20% to it, and then I would, I would add that to my list of uh, the products and services. So let's get out of this app and go into here the go payment. If somebody, if I just sold something to somebody, I need to uh, ring it up as a, as a cash sale. So in, in go payment, this is your default screen when you when you pick it up. I have it on the privacy tab. So it's the end of the day. So if you open this privacy tab, you can see your total sales for the day. And that, that's what you'll see every time. So the, today's gross money was, was 908. And that reflects your sales and your taxes and everything that you collected that day. It'll give you how many transactions you made and the average uh, money in for, for that particular day. So this is happens to be what the end of uh, the day and in, in one of the first, uh, I think it's a Thursday. Uh, I had a pretty good day today. So anyway, if you need to make a sale, I usually keep it on in, in the privacy mode. If you need to make a, a new sale, if you look at the plus sign down at the bottom right, you hit the plus sign and you'll come up with these options, customer payments, invoice payment, quick invoice, or new sale. I rarely use these these three at the top. It's always the new sale one that I, I usually use if I'm making a new sale. So let's just, for instance, say somebody came up and wants to buy um, a dryer belt. So I, I'll just hit new sale, and it'll bring this window up. Let's just make it a service call if somebody needed a dryer belt. So. A service call is going to be under the category of business cost recovery. And down here is, are the things that I've put in uh, for uh, cost recovery. So these are uh, these are what I would use. Let's just say I, I did a service call in town. So I, I, click, I select one service call. And I go back on that arrow uh, to the left of uh, business cost recovery. And then I want to add my, the parts that I sold and and let's say it was a whirlpool belt so you scroll down until you find belt whirlpool and these are all in alphabetical order and all these pictures you can add when you add these uh, pro products and services on your uh, laptop or, or desktop so let's select a, a whirlpool belt and the total that I need to collect right now is 8726. Now you can see when you when you put these in there, the taxes are is the taxes are added automatically for you. So let's review this order. And my CPA came up with a combined parish, or in your case maybe a county uh, combines your parish, uh, county and state taxes. And QuickBooks also tracks. Uh, your location and when you make a sale at like in a, the, a town, another town over that has a different tax rate it will say well I, you were in in uh, I don't know Smallville or something and Smallville tax rate is different from your hometown it will recompute the, the tax rate and keep keep it keep all that up for you so anyway here and on this uh, sales receipt I have a service call and a, and a, a belt so once you add the customer, it gives you a list of, of customers. And I'm going to put myself in here. And I'm already there. And once you add your, your name to the list, or the, your customer's name to the list, uh, it, it changes the tax rate wherever you are. But my CPA wants me to select uh, combined parish and state tax. And I do that. So it... So then, once you do this, you can, down here at the green uh, bar at the bottom, it says charge 8726. You want to do that. And how's the customer going to pay? Is it going to be a, a do you, are you going to connect your card reader to your phone? Uh, have a card reader, and QuickBooks will send you a card reader. And you can, once you connect, you can connect it to your phone and swipe or, or read the chip on their credit card. And also, you can uh, key in the number if you if you need to, or it could be a cash sale or a check. Let's just say this is a check, and it will bring up this this screen, and then uh, 
I rarely get tips, but this is a tip computation screen, but I have no tip at the bottom here, so select that. And it gives you the option to put in a, a check number. This is check number 12345, and I'm going to tender 8726. It recorded the check, and, and then it comes up, do you want a receipt? You can email your customer's receipt, or you can text it to them. I usually text my receipts. Uh, the one thing, well, I'll, if you select text, or email. One thing uh, QuickBooks won't do. Let's see, I'm going to text it to, uh, say, 555. That's an area code. 555 again, 1212. I think that, and you can send that receipt. And the receipt is sent, and you're done. So you hit done, and it will go back to your, your home page. Now, the one thing Quick, QuickBooks doesn't do is when you when you uh, add an email or a or a phone number when you send receipts it doesn't store that and I wish it would because that way you can once you you could keep uh, your your customers uh, vital information I, I, and if you have a, a business that you would regularly send out emails or something it'd be good to have a customer's email address and all that so anyway that's what that's the cash register part of QuickBooks the, the point of sale part and it is real handy to have this. And another thing, let me pull it back up again. Now let's say you uh, sold something to a customer, uh, or you sold a machine, or a customer comes up to you and says, "Hey, you, I bought this machine three weeks ago, uh, and it doesn't work anymore." And you say, "Oh, you did, what's your name?" And you you can pull up money in right there, and you can go to the little search deal, and you can type in uh, a name. Let's type in Chip Knowles. There I am. And it brings up that sale. So it tells me right here that uh, I paid with a check on such and such date on, on 7 6 at, And uh, it gives you the time and how much it was and what you what you did. You, here's a service call and the belt that I sold. And here's the check number. gives you the time and everything like that. There's been several times that, cu that customers have come back and said, well, I bought this this machine just uh, a month ago, and it's not working. And you, know, you do a lot of business in a month, and you can't remember. So uh, I can pull that up. And I said, well, you didn't. I, I actually sold this to you four months ago, and your warranty's up. I only give a 30-day warranty. So if I do any work on it, it's going to be a service call. It's been that long? I haven't, you know, people lose track of time real fast. But anyway, there's a, this is a handy thing to have in your back pocket to be able to look back on your records. So uh, that's what I use every day in my business to record my sales. Okay, by now you know that QuickBooks is my favorite software for running my business. But, you know, there's plenty of... Uh, accounting softwares out there that may that you may be more familiar with or you like better but that's what I use and it makes my business run real smooth please hit that like button and I'll see you on the next one